Welcome back to this week's episode of EVTV. My name is Otto Berga. And I'm Langston James. Being outdoors is a big part of Eagle County's culture, so how does climate change affect those day-to-day -day activities? For more, we go to Sam. Over the past decade, the weather in our valley has been constantly changing. From a very abundant snow season to a dry and warm winter, we never know what's to come. Weather is dynamic, and weather and climate are two different things. And so weather is very localized and changes very rapidly, whereas climate is very broad and changes very slowly. And so a change in the climate is a change in the norms over a long period of time. For example, a lot of people talk about global warming because temperatures of the ocean as well as the atmosphere have been warming over a long period of time, hundred, about 100 years now. And, uh, or noticeably about 100 years now. And so essentially that's what climate change is. And that affects the weather in a lot of different ways. I think that it's the, the idea that um, our, the climate we live in are constantly changing and that in order to continue to support human life on this planet, um, we not only need to be tuned into that changing climate and be able to be adaptive and resilient, um, but we have an um, opportunity to help prevent um, even larger climate disruptions than we've already seen um, through the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. As many may know, it not only affects the economy in our valley, but it also affects the streams, rivers, and ecosystems as a whole. Climate change is upon us. The problem is, and I told you, climate changes naturally over a long period of time, very slowly. But what's happening now is very uh, quick compared to what it's been in the past. And we know from taking core samples from um, the Antarctic what happens when the climate changes too quickly. And what happens is life forms can't keep up. So in the short term, I think you're going to see economic impacts because you're going to find more years where there's not a lot of snow, more years where there are a lot of fires, more years where there's less water, and that's going to have a, a definite impact on the economy here. We need to look at long term beyond what's going on in our valley. We don't grow our own food here for the most part. Look at what's going on right now in places like uh, the Midwest where farmers who usually would have had their, their crops in the field for a month now have yet to even begin planting. We're going to get, we're going to feel that as well because food prices are going to go up as a result of the fact that there's going to be less food. And again, that could be a very long range thing, but short term, I think it's going to have a major impact on the way we live. As Mr. Knight said, climate change is real, and it's an increasing issue. We only have 135 months left to restore Earth. After that, there's no restoration in sight. Colorado is continuing to get drier and drier. And so I think um, we can all do our part. You know, we might not be able to completely affect the climate, but we can do our part to do things like um, conserve water, um, protect um, the population that lives in Eagle County from air pollutants outside of forest fires. So, you know, tailpipe emissions. Um, like I think there are small steps we can take to address climate change without um, with the understanding that we might not be able to affect the entire climate. It's also important that you don't allow people to politicize things that are that are facts. You know, people don't politicize um, whether or not cancer is a bad thing. Well, climate change is a bad thing. Whether you want to say it's man-made or not is irrelevant. Being very uh, cognizant of the things that you do and, and you know, like, uh, uh, the use of plastic bags and things like that, if you can reduce that, every little bit helps. And if, if 15 out of 20 people over, you know, a, a wide span of population were to make a little bit of a difference, it will eventually make a big difference. So please, recycle your bottles, turn off your lights, and reuse as much as possible to move towards a healthier planet for all of us. Teen pregnancy is not talked about a lot, but it impacts students and alums in our community. To learn more about the experiences and the available resources, we go to Alex.
Tiffany is one of 15 teens in Eagle County who has experienced teen pregnancy. Getting pregnant in high school forced Tiffany to make a lot of decisions, along with her life going really fast. Just like in the movies when Tiffany first found out she was pregnant, she felt very alone. But she wasn't alone. The community has also been there to help support Tiffany and her family. So that at Red Canyon High School they have services for teen moms and I think at one time they had daycare um, so that the moms could finish high school. I think that's still happening. In addition to Red Canyon High School supporting Tiffany and her family, the Red Ribbon Project offers a variety of resources to pregnant teens. Yeah, so the Red Ribbon Project fills a really important niche in Eagle County. Um, we noticed years ago, many years ago, that the teen birth rate was really high and so we um, incorporated and wrote a mission statement to reduce teenage pregnancy in Eagle County. Pregnancy at any age is a life-changing event, even more so for teenagers. Tiffany has overall had a positive experience raising Jonathan, but that's Tiffany's experience. Teen pregnancy can be complicated and stressful. It requires teens to make informed and difficult decisions, but those decisions lie with the teens themselves. This has been your reporter, Alex LeBaron. Mr. Schockner is a well-liked teacher here at Eagle Valley. For more, we go to Bella. Eagle Valley High School offers many exciting courses and teachers throughout the science program. But among the program, one teacher really stands out. My name is uh, Steven Schuckner, and I'm a physics teacher here at EVHS. What really got me into physics and what made me want to be a physics teacher is that when I was a junior, I had regular physics and, you know, I thought I had a mediocre teacher and didn't really like it that much and just kind of needed an AP. And I was like, oh, I'll take AP physics. And they're like, no. So then uh, I, had to, I had to get the instructor's per, uh, permission and I signed into AP Physics and he was a great professor and he let, let us do what we would do and I fell in love with physics then so uh, it really showed me the difference what a, what a good teacher can do. I like to think that I don't have an average day here which is why I can do it. Uh, average is kind of boring but one kind of consistent we have here at EVHS is every day I get to deal with good kids and I get to inter interact with good kids and uh, get to joke around and have fun with, with people. And, not take myself too seriously. Schockner is a very interesting teacher. He really likes to uh, be all out, I guess. He's very weird, but a cool weird, <laughs> but a really good teacher. Um, I think he brings a lot of benefits. Uh, first, I mean, he's a, uh, a really fun guy to have around. He, um, 
you know, he's got a good sense of humor and things like that. But then also um, he teaches physics, which is probably one of the most important science classes in high school. Like physics is, is uh, one of the most fundamental things in the world. He's very fun and he's not, he's not exactly one of the most strict teachers, which works in a way that makes the classroom environment feel very open and very fun. You know, when I was in there, I felt less like I was being ordered around to do things and more like learning was an open thing to enjoy, especially with physics, which is such a hard subject. As a teacher and a person, I would say Schachner is someone that never puts himself first, but in the best way possible. He really makes an effort to make connections with his kids and like joke around with them, which is really easy to then like respect him for. So when it's time to get down to business and learn from him, it is easier to quiet up and like hear what he's having to say and just kind of respect him as a person because he has made that personal connection with you. Besides educating his students, Schachner also likes to enjoy the outdoors and spending time with his friends. Formally, uh, my relation with Mr. Schachner is we are co-workers here at Eagle Valley High School. Uh, informally, we are um, professional fun havers and adventure mates. I like to uh, ski. I just kind of started skiing when I, when I moved here. And I've also kind of been getting into mountain biking and kayaking here. Um, before, I've always been into hiking, camping, um, just hanging out with friends, and, you know, enjoying, enjoying time off. Uh, he, uh, he crushes vert on when he gets out on the mountain. Uh, he gets he gets uh, gets after it, bell to bell, um, good skier, and uh, at least in the fall we always get out for whitewater Wednesdays, go kayaking after school. Um, yeah, he's a fun adventure partner. Mr. Schockner is able to leave positive impacts on the people around him, and he hopes that he can continue to do so for years to come. Uh, if I was going to sum it up into one word, I would say he's very passionate. Um, he ca like the things that he when he's into something he cares a lot about it and um, whatever that is he wants to excel at it and he wants those around him to excel at it. I learned from him that it's okay to fail in order to get to success which is something that's been very important to me personally to learn. It's been a hard lesson but it's been an essential one. Overall big plans, I want to be here for a while. I want to see kids, I want to develop a, a really good physics program for kids that c can go through and uh, on engineering pathways and really have good opportunities going into colleges and university or just straight to the workplace. Thanks for joining us on another episode of EVTV. Yes. Yay.